You are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio, man. Once again, we are here, and man, guess who we have today? We have the one and only Rain Fernandez. She is back in the studio. And first and foremost, you've been busy. Yes. <laughs> How are you doing this morning? I'm doing great. I'm happy to be back and just chatting with you. But yeah, it's been a busy, busy life so far. First and foremost, I have to give a shout out to your mom. She's been behind the scenes helping us just have all these amazing exclusives with you. So shout out to your mom. Appreciate everything she's been doing yes. and just supporting us on Refocus Radio and having us the opportunity to just watch you grow. <laughs> First and foremost, man, catch us up because before we talk about the whole DJ Khaled thing, yeah. <laughs> there's a YouTuber that everybody and their mom know. Yeah. And that is Mr. Beast. Tell us. How in the world did you get involved in this project? I'm gonna let you have the floor with. Yeah, for sure. That's a that's a question I get a lot. Um, well, Mr. Beast, what a crazy experience that was. Um, I would like to say that the challenge I did was a hundred days in a bunker. So that video is out now. Be sure to go check it out, Mr. Beast, surviving a hundred days in a nuclear bunker. Um, he brought me back. I had actually been a part of one of his previous videos and it was the laser challenge video. And um, I didn't win that challenge, but I was top three. And they still called. Still good. Yeah, still good. Yeah. Um, and I got a call from the team back in December of 2023. And they were like, hey, Rain, we're thinking of casting you for this new uh you know, long form video where you're going to have to stay a while. Are you down for that? And I was like, yeah, sign me up. So, Mr. Beast. Yeah, it's Mr. Beast. <laughs> I'll do it again. Uh, so they brought me in and I kind of vibe checked with the team. And, you know, um, I love the team and we get along very well. So they picked me. And before you know it, it was January. They flew me and the other contestant out. We had no idea who each other were. Like we had not seen each other at all. Um, and we started filming February 16th. So it was a crazy quick turnaround. And um, I was just so blessed to be have that opportunity for a second time. I mean, that guy, did you have opportunity to like see him in person, meet him in person, chat a little bit? Like, how did that work out for you? Of course. So I, we were seeing Jimmy every 10 days. Like he was coming down, hanging out with us, um, filming with us. So it was kind of funny. Me and my other contestant, Hugo, we were like, wow, we just get to casual casually see Jimmy like every, every week. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, he was very involved. So were the other, um, crew members who were part of the Beast crew. Uh, so it was a really good time. Someone like him who is a massive influencer on social media and one of the top performers on YouTube. Yeah. I mean, at any time, were you nervous or were you like, you know what, I'm going to just try to see if I can learn as much as I can from a, a, a guru like him? Yeah. Um, you know, it didn't hit me until a little later on in the challenge where we were getting notes and kind of like, you know, guys, um, cause we have folks checking in on us and everything. And, you know, we have to stay on top of our vlogging because that's what makes the story. And if we're not giving them content, then there's nothing to use. Yeah. So that was a kind of like a growing experience for me. I was like, wow, this is how the behind the scenes is. And it is a massive production. It is real, but it's a massive production. And yeah, you do learn a lot being working with the number one YouTuber. It's crazy. So you, you got like an exclusive little masterclass. Yeah, actually, we're living it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, seriously. When it was all said and done, I mean, what was it like for the response of people online figuring out, oh, wow, Rain is kicking it with Mr. Beast. I yeah. mean, she's part of a massive production. What was the people's reaction they found out? Yeah, sure. So honestly, it was a mix of love and hate. I'm not even going to lie there. I can imagine. Yeah. So because um, being introduced to a whole new like audience that never knew about me. Um, and then obviously the folks that have been following me, everyone's like, is this you? When did this happen? Oh my gosh. So a lot of people are really shocked about that and um, very happy for me. But then 
On the other hand, there's folks that never knew about me and there's love and hate. And honestly, I just, I take it for what it is. And um, I'm growing. My my social media pages are growing like crazy. And so it's it's interesting. It's, yeah, I've never dealt with this much attention before. So it's a wild experience. And when he released it on, on YouTube, were you kind of nervous, like, whoa, like, I'm about to be on one of the top channels, like, on YouTube? <laughs> Actually, yes. I remember I was like, I need to start gearing up um, content that I want to release after. Because once this is posted, it's going. There's no turning back. There's no stopping. And if I want to make the most out of this moment, I need to be ready to. So, um, yeah, it was wild. I was... I was excited. I was as ready as I was ever going to be when it was posted. So, yeah. Listen, I ref- I'm Refocus Radio talking to our guest today, Ren Fernandez. And man, we have to get the backstory mm-hmm. of your experience in Germany and the whole DJ Khaled project. First and foremost, what was that experience like going internationally? Yeah. And what was your feeling when you were around greatness? Oh my God. I forgot. We haven't talked since since then. That's wild. Last time you hear, we were talking about that contest yes, and you won. And I won. Um Wow. Well, uh going to Germany, that was my first time out of the country. So that was an experience. That's not bad. It's not first bad. First time. <laughs> I was with my momager and um you know, I filmed in a castle that was built back in the 1600s with a really amazing team. Shout out to Orbit, Nader at Orbit, um, LMG, Lobo Music Group, just a really solid team. And, you know, it was kind of a culture shock, but it's a moment that I'll never forget. And yeah, I just, um, I guess I couldn't believe that we were actually at the castle finally because winning the contest it's like oh if you win this you'll get to do a music video in a castle and it actually happened so um and the music video is amazing i love it so much but it was a crazy opportunity for the audience in the uh radio land and the theater of the mind kind of break down the visuals uh when you when you got in to the castle and kind of describe what was the feeling like being able to see, like not just history, yeah, but to kind of be in that moment, like, wow, mm-hmm. I'm here. <laughs> it was surreal, really. Um, the architect in Germany is crazy. It's beautiful. And I've never in my life been in a massive castle. So just walking into like the ballroom and you just see all the art the, the the ceiling is just decked out and there's it's massive. There's like, I don't know how many stories to that castle. It's huge. And um, I think it was just such a like, wow, I really got picked to do this. How blessed am I? And then on top of that, um, the prince, I got to meet the prince and the family that lives at the castle. And they were very supportive. They they loved me. I loved them. And they even let me film in their mausoleum, which is family owned. And it's a huge mausoleum. Yeah. Man. Yeah. So you, it was beautiful. Man, that's impressive. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> my next question will be, was DJ Khaled there? And if so, did you have another mini one-on-one this moment with him and, and catch up? Yeah, you know, I wish he was. He's mm-hmm. very busy, mm-hmm. but um, Steve Lobel, he is an industry goat. Mm-hmm. He's literally massive executive, super tight with Khaled. So he came along and I was so happy that Steve was able to join us on this trip because um, he's a big deal. <laughs> oh yeah, he is. Yeah. That's a huge name in yeah. the industry. And with that uh, in mind, were you able to... Uh, have any discussion? Like, did they talk anything about the industry behind the scenes? Like, you know, not just you being there, Mm -hmm. but like, hey, like, here's your momentum. Yeah. Here's some word advice. Did anything like that happen as well? You know, it was a, it was kind of like a time crunch video shoot. So we're constantly go, go, go. But we did have our moments where um, we're talking about, you know, yeah, Steve was like, I want to release this underneath 
my my boutique label and so we had those conversations and that was really sick I think I was really happy that um, they were able to see my work ethic because uh, it was freezing out there in Germany and we had a lot of outdoor shoots so um, they recognized like oh rain doesn't play she's about right. her work so I was yeah. happy they got to see that side of me yeah as an artist I mean every time we meet you keep going to a whole new level thank you I mean Wow. Thank you. It's the goal. I don't know anybody else in San Antonio oh. right now at Thank your age. You. Thank you. That's doing it the way you're doing it. So for the audience, what's going on in Rain's world, man? Like, how are you embracing these accomplishments, man? Because these are wild, yeah. like once in a lifetime. Yeah. Thanks. Um, yeah, that is, it is pretty wild. I think that... Well, lately I realized I need to take a step back and really just uh, live in the moment and appreciate it uh, because, yeah, I mean, who gets to just be on a Mr. Beast video and then win competition? You make it look easy. Talent? Right, you know, and then just have Shaq know you. Like, it's crazy. We're going to talk about that. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think that I'm, I am really proud of myself. I am such a overachiever and I always want to shoot for more and and strive for more that um honestly my mind is like what's next mm -hmm. um but yeah no I am I'm very proud of how far I've I've come and what I've been able to do and I just hope that um I keep growing because that's the whole point of life and doing this in the end you know like I I have I still have so many goals that I want to accomplish. So, yeah. I know you mentioned Shaq uh, a moment ago. So let's kind of dive into that because I remember, I think it was last year. Yeah. Right? Yes. And I remember I was actually in Vegas at the time and I saw you had a um, a photo with Shaq. I'm like, <laughs> what? Yeah. I'm like, and I think before that or after that, you correct me if I'm wrong, you, you had a photo with uh, Mike Tyson as yep. well. I'm yeah. like, wow, <laughs> yeah. you just doing it. Tell us about that story. Yeah, Mike Tyson? Or and, and Shaq. And Shaq. But okay. Shaq first. Um, okay, Shaq. So, actually, um, I have some close family friends who grew up with Shaq. Oh, and wow. they always wanted to get me in contact with Shaq. Like, hey, Shaq, you got to meet this girl. You got to meet this girl. Um, and it happened back in September of last year. I went to one of his um, festivals where he DJs at. Mm -hmm. And it was out in Fort Worth. And, um, yeah, we got backstage passes to, you know, just kind of be back there with him and see the show. And he came out. He knew who I was already because I had already spoken to him on FaceTime. Um, and so he was familiar with my name and who I was. Um, but getting to meet him in person really just like amped it up. And it was crazy. I'm I excited for you. Thank you. <laughs> he's massive in person. I was like, oh, he's oh my God. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, now we have a relationship and um, not like that, but like a communication. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm able to just be like, hey, Shaq, um, could you maybe uh, shout me out on this? And he posted <laughs> me to his feed literally two days ago. Wow. Like, yeah, it's crazy. Like, that's, that's my life. That's awesome. <laughs> I mean, let's talk about that even more because yeah. I know you know about Shaq and basketball. Yeah. And he's Duh. election. <laughs> yes. LF, uh, LA Lakers, Hall of Famer. I mean, did that even process through your mind? Like, yo, this guy played with Kobe Bryant. Yo. You know? Yeah. Like, yeah. I, um, obviously I know he's the goat and my parents love Shaq and I see his face everywhere. Um, so, you know, it's funny because when you're actually texting this person or talking to this person on FaceTime or whatever, um, you just see that person. You don't see like this big image. So um, it doesn't hit me until like we're actually communicating on social media and it's like Shaq reposted you. It's like, what the heck? What? Yeah. Or I can just be like, hey Shaq, like that's so crazy. Um, but yeah, it's a, uh, my dad, he's like, what is this? Like, who would have thought my daughter would be uh, in communication with Shaq? It's, yeah, it's wild. When you look at the industry that you are, you're starting to take it by storm. Thank you. What are you hoping that you can maintain as you are navigating through the next levels of your career? Um, I think... Uh, 
just having faith in myself and still keeping that spark. Um, and I feel like I learned that a lot currently with this Beast Project that released and having over a hundred million eyes on me and Hugo. Um, yeah, just knowing that I need to have tougher skin and I need to be ready for everyone's opinion, good and bad. And that ultimately no one knows who I am. I know the true me. And um, yeah, I feel like I need to just always um, be sure about myself. So that that most of all. I want to dive into that once again this time before we're talking to our guest today, Rain Fernandez. I, I want to talk about that because in the minutes we have left, I want you to have a little master class for the audience. Yeah. <laughs> Those who may look up to you, whether they are creatives or just people in general, what's some of the things, because I like what you said about uh, as you're growing, you're, you have to have tough skin and deal with the good and bad feedback and, you know, people just trying to speak to mind. Right. What words of encouragement would you say to someone who may not have tough skin mm -hmm. and be like, man, I don't know if I can take all that heat. What will you say now that you've been able to experience that now? Yeah, um, well, I feel you, first of all, because I'm a very sensitive person. Um, but I'm going to take my words from my dad. Uh, I think just flip the narrative. Like, if they have you completely wrong, if they don't actually know what they're talking about and they're saying one thing, but it's totally off, um, Turn that negative experience into a positive. And I feel like that's what I've been able to do um, with whatever negative comments have come my way. I've been able to flip that narrative. And I feel like kind of making light of the situation, everything doesn't have to be so serious. I realize that our generation is very sensitive and they'll take one thing and run with it when it's not actually that. So um, yeah, I'm learning to not take things so seriously and... Um, yeah, just flip the narrative, honestly. Yeah, when it comes to the weight of success, uh, being able to manage your life schedule now. Yeah. I can only imagine it might have changed <laughs> just a little bit. Yeah, right? just a little bit. How do you stay on top of things and maintain who you are mm -hmm. versus like, man, it's a lot of opportunities to just kind of like feel myself a little bit yeah. and kind of look down yeah. at people or whatever. How, how you keep yourself grounded and, and, and still strive for greatness? Yeah, my family, my best friend, my sister, um, I can always go to them and talk to them. And even if I'm feeling myself a little too much, they always pull me back down and um, just let me know, you didn't get here alone. Everyone, you know, this was this was a team effort. And um, yeah, I think I'm just really appreciative towards them. Um, I'm naturally not a cocky person, but we all have our moments, you know. Uh, so I really do think that having my my closest people around does keep me grounded. Yeah, keeps me feeling sane. <laughs> yeah, as a woman in the industry, uh, what will you say to women out there who are creators or entrepreneurs who are you know, they're, they're trying to make uh, a legacy. What, yeah. what would Because you, you're doing it right now. Oh, man, thank what you. What would you say to women out there who want to kind of be like you and yeah. leave a powerful legacy because you're killing it? Thank you. Honestly, just keep keep working hard, hard work, um, being consistent and knowing knowing what you have and just believing in yourself, really. Yeah, that is literally what I've been able to do these past years and it's gotten me this far. So that'd be my advice for all the ladies and um, don't let anyone just get in your way. You said it, you <laughs> said it. Now, when you look into the future of, of what you have in front of you, are there any uh, current projects that you're working on? And if so, how can people stay in touch? Cause I know you can't spill the beans, <laughs> but how can people keep in touch with you? Yeah. So, um, most recently projects, most recent projects were The Beast. And then obviously my brand new music video, She the One by Rain Fernandez. Go check that out, guys. It's on all streaming platforms and on YouTube music video. So that that is what I'm living in right now. Uh, but moving forward, you know, obviously going to be working on some more music, more projects. That's always in the works. And um, you guys can always stay connected with me. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok at Rain Fernandez. R A Y N E Fernandez. And yeah. <laughs> if someone's listens right now 
And they're like, you know what? I want to work with Ray. Ooh. How can they get in touch with your mom? Yes. And your team. For sure. And have an opportunity to maybe work with you in the future. Yeah. Obviously, y'all can always shoot me a DM. I do check my DMs. Um, but you can email me at mail at rainfernandez.com. And that is the quickest way that you'll get a response for sure. Email me. Where you been? Listen, I'm Refocus Radio talking to Rain Fernandez. An exclusive opportunity to catch up with her and everything that she's doing. Last thing I have you do is if you want to say anything to the city of San Antonio, what will you say? Y'all, I love y'all. This is my city. And whenever people talk bad about it, I'm like, don't talk bad about my city. Uh, this is my home. So I'm always rocking with San Antonio. Yeah, I love my city. But like always, we want to say thank you for your time. Thank you. 